So this is what is considered to be the very first photograph. This is what is called a heliograph. It was made by a French scientist named Nesifor Nieps. It is of a rooftop in France. It was taken from his studio window. I have had an interesting relationship with this piece for many years. I've always been fascinated by it. I've talked about it on the show before. In fact, back in 2010, I was asked to speak at a tech conference in Paris about the first photograph. Ted Forbes, who's a fantastic guy that I've learned uh, all about on the internet. He runs a podcast called The Art of Photography. Thank you very much, Rodrigo. What was said? Uh, Rodrigo asked me to prepare a short history of uh, platforms, essentially, in photography. Okay, let me stop right here. In case you can't tell, I was extremely nervous. I'm in a foreign country, a long way from my home in Texas, and I'm speaking to a mostly English-speaking audience, and I'm up on this panel with several heavyweights, including Madeline Nicholas, who at that time was working for Kodak, and this guy, whose name is Jean-Marie Hulot, who worked for Steve Jobs, was very good friends, worked for him at Next, and then later came over to Apple, and developed a lot of the early software applications like iCal and the early syncing stuff that Mac OS X was doing. So I didn't really know who these people were, I was pretty nervous. Okay, what you're looking at up here, this is actually what is generally considered to be the first photograph. This was a photograph taken by a gentleman named Joseph Nessifor Nepies in uh, southern France in about 1825. And uh, in contrast to what you see today with photography, this is actually an eight-hour exposure that was taken of his roof. Uh, eight-hour? Eight-hour exposure. So the camera was open, came back eight hours later, shut the lens, and then basically stuck this sheet of metal through a bunch of chemicals and came well, up with that's an That's what image. they call a point-and-shoot. Eight hours. <laughs> That's a point, wait, and shoot, I think is what that is. Uh, but anyway, thus after this photo, uh, photography as an art was born. Uh, it, it's also arguable, there may have been photos earlier than this, but this one still exists, and this is the first recorded example, 1825 or so. I have always been extremely fascinated with the first photograph, but I have actually never seen it in person until this weekend. The first photograph lives at the Harry Ransom Center, which is part of the University of Texas in Austin. It's only three hours from here. And last week, my friend Andy and I decided that we would go ahead and make the pilgrimage down to check it out. It went something like this. So, I'm with my friend Andy today. You guys might remember him from a long time ago when we did the bookstore episode. But if you were to try and win a book on this show, you would go for the negative. I'd go right? for the negative. You'd do the negative part. Would you do a copy of the negative that has all this ballpoint pen well, on it? Well, yeah, I mean, somebody else has already done all the notes <laughs> <for> me, <laughs> you know? it's, it's, Ooh, I gotta read that. <laughs> we have decided we needed to go see the first photograph at the Harry Ransom Center in Austin, Texas. Also at the Harry Ransom Center right now is the Elliot Erwitt exhibition. And so we got a little two for one today. We got Elliot Erwitt, which is a retrospective right. apparently. Total retrospective. And the first photograph. And the first photograph, which is very retrospective. <laughs> We are here at the Harry Ransom Center. We have made the pilgrimage. It's, it's time right. to go see the first photograph. Well, while you're reading that, I'm gonna go look at the first photograph. Okay. So right behind the gift shop. The first photograph is actually very difficult to see in person. It is really dim. And the version that most of us are familiar with seeing is actually an enhanced reproduction of the first photograph. There are several reasons for this. One, it's age. And then also you have to remember that nobody was using the term photography in these days. This is years before Louis Daguerre and Fox Talbot were doing their thing. Nieps called this a heliograph. And Nesfor Nieps was 
interested in the science behind image reproduction. He was heavily involved with lithography, and he was part of a group of people at that time who were interested in the possibilities of using light-sensitive chemicals coated onto a surface, pairing that up with some kind of optic, and then creating an image that way. Now, the problem that most people had in those days was getting the image to stay permanent and getting it to fix. What would happen was you would get the image onto the surface and it would just fade out, and so that was kind of the missing link. And in this process of heliography, as Niepce called it, he was finally able to make that happen. Now, there was actually a, a successful attempt much earlier than this. In 1822, he did a reproduction of an etching, but he continued to experiment with it and damaged it in that process. So this is the earliest surviving example, which was taken somewhere between 1825 and 1827. So commonly, we recognize this as being the first photograph. Now, the interesting part is how did this wind up in Texas? Now, Niepce took this to England and he took it to various people to try to get some interest around funding for their experimentation with this process and really didn't get any interest in it. It eventually was returned to his family where it sat in the trunk for years and years and years and went into obscurity. And by the 1950s, this was rediscovered by a photo historian out of Germany who had a large collection. He bought the piece and then later donated his entire collection to the Harry Ransom Center at the University of Texas. And that's how it came to Austin where it lives today. There's also some interesting information on this and I'll link up to a couple other videos in the show description that you might be interested in. There was a collaboration project in probably around 2000 or so with the Getty Conservation Center the first photograph obviously being priceless and very fragile. Um, there was a lot of research done into the conservation of this particular object and how it would last the test of time. The case that you see it sitting in with that very opulent frame is really interesting too. It is an oxygen proof case. Um, you don't see it because it's under the table and behind the scenes, but there's all these meters and things that kind of monitor the first photograph and they come and check those every couple of years. It can travel with the case, so you will see it on exhibit in other places as well. But that is the first photograph. Also on display when we were at the Harry Ransom Center is a wonderful career retrospective of Elliot Erwitt. And I thought this was a really interesting pairing with the first photograph. So as you come out of the display for the first photograph, you can see the Elliot Erwitt exhibition. It is massive and it is phenomenal. It covers 70 years of his career. There are over 200 images in here. And what was also interesting is Elliot Erwitt did a lot of work for book publications, photojournalist work, uh, Life magazine. So there's a lot of display cases with various objects that you can see as well. Probably my favorite piece in this show is a small spiral bound handmade book that Elliot made in 1950. In fact, he made six identical versions of this book. He gave one as a gift to Edward Steichen, who at that time was the curator of photography at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. The two became friends. Steichen turned around and bought several of Elliot's works for the collection at MoMA. Anyway, it is a fantastic exhibition. I will put a link in the show description if you're anywhere near the Austin area. Go check it out and definitely go see the first photograph. Just to share some thoughts with this, I've always had a very special relationship with the first photograph. It's a big part of the history of photography. Sure, it's not technically the first photograph ever made, but it is the oldest surviving photograph that we have. It begins an entire history in a medium that we all know and love. I have talked about this piece on the show. I've spoken about it publicly. I have never seen it in person. And to get to go do this finally, considering it lives three hours from my doorstep, um, it's kind of inexcusable, but it is a really moving experience to see part of photo history that it's really hard to describe. In fact, the B-roll that you've seen in this video, um, even if you go online and look at images that people have taken, it does not describe what it looks like in person. It is totally a different experience. The fact that it's so dim and they have it lit best they can and you're supposed to be viewed at an angle, but you really need to kind of walk around it to take the whole thing in. And you get different glimpses depending on where you are because it just barely sits and floats on the surface of this plate. And it's fascinating to me, it's a haunting image. It's kind of half still life, half landscape with these bizarre geometric shapes. But the fascinating part to me about this image is that photography is a medium that is largely designed for reprodu reproduction or replication. So like if you consider the film days where we would make a negative and then prints would be made from that negative, or if you consider the digital age where we are now, I mean, what is a digital image? It's not an object. It's nothing you could hold in your hands. It's just data that is written to a card. And even the way we experience it probably involves more of the internet and digital reproduction on a computer screen than it does in a print form. So 
photography really throughout the entire history has been largely this reproduction model and therefore objects that are one of a kind are pretty rare and sure this probably isn't technically the first photograph even though we call it that is the oldest surviving photograph that we know of but there is a magical sense to this that if you are interested in photography and have a passion for this medium like I do it's just a moving experience to go see and I find it also ironic that you know, Niepce was working, he was largely interested in reproducing imagery, and that's how this was stumbled upon. What's interesting is it's you can't reproduce the first photograph. You have to go see it in person. Even if you wanted to go reshoot that same shot, it, the landscape has changed. The buildings have been taken down, the tree's not there. There's no way to actually do it. It is truly a one-of-a-kind image. Anyway, I wanted to share this experience with you guys, and when Andy and I talked about it, he said, bring a camera, let's go down and shoot a video. And I said, all right, that is perfect. And so that's what we did, and I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll link up some other things in the show description if you were interested in learning more. And if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like it, share it, and subscribe to The Art of Photography so you'll always be up to date on all the latest and greatest stuff that we do here. I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.